<clears throat> so I don't know how to start this video at all and I never thought I would be making this video <clears throat> but I felt that I needed to share what I was going through <clears throat> that maybe it might help others at, at the very least to have others understand what we are going through at the current moment. So as many of you may know, because I did announce it a while ago, my husband and I are expecting our very first child. A baby we have prayed for. For a very long time. I didn't make a formal announcement on YouTube but it is a boy. You could imagine my husband's absolute joy to know he was going to have a son. Now I do post a lot more of my personal life on social media like Twitter so a lot of my Twitter followers and my patrons on Patreon know more about my my personal life that I don't always share on YouTube because my majority of my YouTube videos are product videos and a few are other videos, life videos, other hobbies that I do. Um, so yes, we're having a boy and we are naming him Lucas after my mother's twin brother who passed away when they were just a day old. He had a birth defect that he could not survive with and at the time you know 40 some years ago the doctors didn't know and they even if they did know I don't think they had the <clears throat> type of tools and knowledge to fix what was wrong but his name was Lucas so that is what we are naming our son and his middle name is to be Howard which is the name of Doug's biological father who passed away in an accident when Doug was just a toddler. This was very special for both of us and something I was choosing not really to share online until I felt ready but I don't think there will ever be a time where I feel ready especially now. So we have had you know the normal prenatal visits um, and then at the 20 week scan when you find out, they, they scan the anatomy of your baby and you, they tell you the gender if you want to know. Um, they were able to get all the pictures they needed. We were told it was a boy and then the ultrasound didn't come clear enough for them to get a good look at his heart. And they reassured us that sometimes it's because of the baby being in the wrong position. It's also because the heart is so tiny at that point that getting a picture of a beating object inside a little moving object inside a moving object is difficult. Um, it can be, I was reassured that it can be the technician's fault, the equipment just, and, and where I live the equipment isn't like top notch anyway, but so, you know, we were like, oh, that's a little bit concerning, but I totally understand. There's many factors that could lead to it. And we were also reassured that it is common for the heart being the hardest um, organ or, you know, the hardest part of to get pictures from the ultrasound. So they're like, let's wait a month. He will grow. He'll come back. His heart will be bigger and we'll get better pictures. So we're like, okay. So we waited another month. <clears throat> and then we went back and they w did another ultrasound to scan his heart to f get the good pictures so they can just say, yep, everything's good. And again, we were told that it was still difficult to get good enough pictures to determine. I went to my midwife because I was currently going to a midwifery. I think that's what it's called when it's an office full of midwives and they tried performing the ultrasound there on their equipment, but their equipment was even less um, technologically advanced than where I'd been going. And even there, they still couldn't determine whether or not the heart was okay. So 
with very little worry my midwife suggested we go to Seattle Children's Hospital we, we live about three hours away from Seattle Children's Hospital because they have very good equipment over there like best of the best like you know some of the best in the country for uh, prenatal ultrasounds and stuff and they have great pediatric cardiologists over there and they you know work with the heart like specifically so she she told me she reassured me that they were sending me there because they just couldn't determine if the heart was good to go or not not because they saw something that was wrong but because they couldn't make the decision so I mean you guys know me I'm a worry wart so I was worried anyway but tr trying to keep my head up and hope for the best just like everybody in my family reassured me that we would go there and they would do the scan and everything would be great and they would just say yep your heart's his heart is good and we'd be on our way when we'd had a wasted trip to Seattle and it would be fine and so you know my husband's very very optimistic and I am on the other side of that so sorry my phone is going off let me <clears throat> turn it off real quick so we go and the appointment's a couple hours and you know we're getting anxious and the technician is just jamming that ultrasound wand like into my stomach you know because I'm not the skinniest of girls either so she goes and takes the scans there was like 73 different pictures to the pediatric cardiologist and said you know we may have gotten all the pictures we needed we may need more so we wait and then she comes back and she's like, okay well we need a bit more pictures so she takes about 30 more different pictures and we hear the heartbeat and everything and you know he's kicking Lucas my son inside me he does not like ultrasounds or anything he always starts kicking when he's getting poked or prodded like that and so she takes those pictures back to the pediatric cardiologist and they decide they have enough pictures to determine what they need to determine and we go to the consult room and wait in there for what seemed like forever and she's like oh it'll be five minutes and I swear it took so much longer than five minutes it was like probably half an hour I don't know I wasn't I couldn't see the clock from where I was sitting but it was one of those annoying clocks that tick why do they have those types of clocks in like waiting rooms where you could potentially be getting like the worst news ever it's kind of like added to my anxiety so the doctor comes in with our genetic counselor and I'm really good at reading people and I knew as soon as he walked in the door something was up but I'm like not freaking out yet because it's okay it could be minor I have a best friend who lived 17 years with a huge hole in her heart and they didn't catch it until she was 17 she had heart surgery through her groin and she's good and she's healthy today and she has her own daughter and you know people can live with heart defects there are so many and that's another thing I've, I've learned so much in the last three to four days um, that congenital heart defects are the most common birth defect in the world um so yeah I felt that something was up and especially when the doctor set down the diagram or the picture of what a normal heart looks like and I'll try to paste it here you know or you can google it so he explained to us how the normal heart works it is blood that needs oxygen from your upper body and your lower body come in through your vena cavas you have a superior and an inferior one and they go into your right atrium that where's where the blood that needs oxygen collects and then it dumps down into your right ventricle and the ventricle is like a pump I'm getting a phone call from Seattle Children's Hospital so I'm gonna have to pause this video okay so where was I right so oxygen poor blood comes into the right side dumps into the right ventricle then the right ventricle is a pump that pumps the oxygen poor blood up into your pulmonary artery and into your lungs to get more oxygen and then that blood is pumped back into your heart 
from the lungs into the left atrium where it collects and then it dumps down into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle is pumped to your aorta which sends the oxygen rich blood back up into your upper body and down into your lower body and that is how your blood is circulated through your heart and lungs and that is how it gets oxygen so <laughs> when they pulled out the picture of what our son's heart looked like I was like what are we looking at so what he has is instead of those four chambers where the blood goes through your heart he only has two he has a common atrium where the blood collects and one ventricle where the blood is pumped from so the blood from his vena cava's both upper body and lower body that need oxygen and the blood from his lungs that has oxygen all mix in the same collection chamber then it is all dumped into the same ventricle pump and then it's just pumped back through and the oxygen rich and oxygen poor blood go to both the aorta and the pulmonary so essentially his blue and red blood is mixing and being pumped wherever it really wants to go um, most of it is going to his lungs because he also has a very small aorta the aorta is the artery that sends the oxygen rich blood to your body but again his is mixed so the aorta is also pumping O blood that needs oxygen back into his body which is obviously not how it is supposed to go and he's getting a lot of blood to his lungs at the moment so this means that he will need several open heart surgeries after he's born um, they are going to watch the growth of his aorta over the next couple months because it's so small, it will determine if it does or does not grow what his first surgery will be. They do anticipate doing open heart surgery one to two weeks after he's born to place a band on the pulmonary artery to restrict blood flow to his lungs so more can be pumped to the body. That's if he doesn't need some sort of corrective surgery on his small aorta. So I am praying to God that it grows because it was on the very lower limits of acceptable when we had our appointment on Friday. And the pulmonary banding will happen regardless. So he gets through that surgery at one to two weeks old and then he will need another open heart surgery at three to six months old where they will take the super vena cava the vein that comes from your upper body that directs the oxygen poor blood to your heart they will attach that directly to his pulmonary artery so that's directly to the lungs so the blood that needs oxygen that's coming from his upper body will just go straight to his lungs. And if everything goes well with that surgery, he will need another open heart surgery when he is three to six years old. And that is where they will attach the inferior vena cava, the vein that brings the oxygen poor blood from your lower body directly to the pulmonary. So at this point, none of the blue blood or oxygen poor blood will be going to his heart. It will be going straight to his lungs to get oxygen. And then the lungs will pump the oxygen rich blood, the red blood to his heart. And then the heart will pump it out the aorta into the body. So essentially his blue and red blood will no longer mix in the heart. It will just be red blood in his heart and the blue blood will be going straight to his lungs <clears throat> and 
that is the three stage surgery that they have planned possibly four if his aorta needs work and they have been seeing this type of defect often at all it is so rare that they don't have a name to give us science medical science has not given this defect a name but there are like 40 m or more there's more than 40 there's like 40 plus different types of congenital heart defects congenital means present at birth I personally know three people in my life who have a congenital heart defect two had heart surgery through the groin and one has had open heart surgery they're all alive and at different ages and doing fine the fact that he only has two chambers means his heart is going to be working harder and may wear out faster and he may or may not need a heart transplant as a young adult or even earlier as a teen it really just depends and these surgeries are not a guarantee the, they do these types of surgeries many times a year but not for this condition of what he has because like I said it's so rare um, the closest heart defect that is similar to this with the similar surgeries is hypoplastic left heart syndrome or hypoplastic right heart syndrome which is where half of the heart either side doesn't develop fully so this is not that because he has his his whole heart but it's just you know one big pump one two big chambers one pump and one collection chamber and one big valve that goes across instead of two the average life expectancy of people with the defect that is similar to his is five years old which is why they told us that the surgeries do not guarantee they do not fix what is wrong and that we do need to be prepared to lose him at any age but we are going to do everything we can to give our son a fighting chance I am currently in my third trimester of pregnancy and will need to relocate to Seattle three to four weeks before my induction date and I am going to go alone to allow Doug to continue to work until Lucas is born and then I will need Doug by my side um, so this is all very scary this is all very uncertain I don't know how we are going to make it through this but we will at this point we have decided to continue with our building our new house regardless of if we will get to live in it with our son or not or not at all because we may have to stay in Seattle, you know, who knows, because these are the complications they were able to find now. A lot of the times they find more complications after baby is born because they can see clearly his heart when they can do a scan like on his body versus through my body. So worst case scenario, we would just turn around and sell our brand new house if we had to stay in Seattle. Doug would lose his job and have to get a new one in Seattle. Thankfully, I can really take you guys anywhere I go. Um, it's going to be a lot harder. And this is why I wanted to tell you guys right away. Because if videos seem few and far between that's why and I mean our, our future is just so unclear it's never been this unclear for me I've always had a plan you know I've uh, we had a plan everything was going in the right direction for us and just like that 
everything's up in the air and everything's uncertain and you grieve the loss of the experience you thought you were going to have but I can't be sad for long because I have to be strong for my son. We are not going to give up on our son. Some of you may not know this but I was born myself at University of Washington where I will be delivering our son. I was born at like 20 something weeks. I think it was 20 between 25 and 27 weeks gestation. I was born three and a half months early. Doctors didn't think I was going to make it. Told my mother I would have a ton of problems, a ton of developmental delays and just a ton of health problems. I mean, they didn't think I was going to survive 26 years ago and I did because nobody gave up on me. I cannot and will not give up on my son. The UW and Seattle Children's Hospital have done amazing things. I've joined a Facebook group for parents with children who have CHD and for, you know, um, adults who have congenital heart defects to help parents who have children with it. And I've learned a lot. I've learned so much in the last four days, more than I ever learned in any biology class combined in school about the heart and about congenital heart defects. And there were so many success stories and a lot of these people had their surgeries and whatnot and their children's surgeries at Seattle. So that does give us hope. I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do when I have to move to Seattle probably mid-June. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as YouTube because I will more than likely be staying at the Ronald McDonald house um, and I highly doubt they allow vaping in there and even then I'm not vaping until my son is born and getting friends over there to help me with my videos gonna be a lot harder than having them come up here you know where we all live so I'm kind of lost right now I'm overwhelmed but I'm trying to put the pieces together I'm trying to put our ducks in a row because I am the type of person that needs a plan I need a game plan and then I can you know, execute in actions and I can get to my end game. And so I'm wasting no time getting things figured out. I will probably film a ton of videos ahead of time with my mother or my sister and um, try to manage this because YouTube is my source of income and if you didn't know that, now you know. I do make my income from YouTube, so to stop doing videos and to take a break would be detrimental to Doug and I's income together, and we will need, you know, as much income as possible for the next, you know, forever. <laughs> so I can't, I can't stop. And I know a lot of people suggest, you know, take time off YouTube. And part of me wishes I could because it's a lot harder to come on camera with a smiling face when I feel so broken. But I, I can't stop because I need to put out content or my channel will die and my income will dry up. So that is the road we are on and that is the hand we have been dealt and we will get through this by the grace of God. Like I said, I don't know how, but we have to. There's no other choice. I have grown to love my son already who moves so much inside me 
and is still moving. And as far as answers to questions you guys may have, I don't know if I will be able to get to them or even answer them myself. We have a ton of questions of our own to ask the medical team, the surgical team, the pediatric cardiologist. We will be going back to Seattle Children's Hospital next week. We will also, or is it the week after? We're going on the 7th. And then again on the 24th. And then, like I said, I will be relocating to Seattle mid June. So that's that and I needed to get this out of the way and off of my chest because I didn't want to do it later and have to feel the sadness again because it just doesn't help the situation. I need to be strong for my son. I allowed myself time to grieve and I mean I'd be lying if I said I don't feel sad every day or worried you know I thought I was stressed before this you know worrying about if the delivery will go right or if I'll be able to successfully breastfeed and now those worries seem so small compared to what we are going to face I guess all that I ask from you guys is understanding and support prayers. Please keep my family in your thoughts. I know my YouTube channel has been very different for the last several months, but this is what I chose to do for my son and continue to choose to do. I may or may not take this week as a personal week, but like I said, if there's no videos, there's no views, there's no income, so I may just buckle down and do it. It's so, it's such, all these decisions, it's so hard for me to decide what is right. You guys have the, the full story as of how much we know now, and I will be updating you guys as time goes. And all I can do is hope for the best. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.